In this video, we're going to recap five of our favorite photography techniques. Beginners often see a photo they like and then try to recreate it without knowing what makes it a good photo. Having a firm grasp on these concepts will give you a good foundation and help you feel confident in developing your own photographic style. We've actually made full videos for each of these techniques, so if you want to learn more about them, check the description below. Subframing is essentially the technique of creating a frame within a frame. This is most commonly used to bring your viewer's attention to your subject. You can implement subframing quite literally, like in this example, but there are more subtle ways in which you can implement it as well. You can use elements from your background, foreground, light, textures, colors, and any combination of these to strengthen your composition. When executed well, subframing will immediately show the viewer where to look. It can also provide additional visual interest to the photo and add depth. The great thing about adding more compositional techniques to your photography toolbox is you can use it for a variety of different genres of photography and filmmaking. You can use it in street photography, fashion, commercial, or even just when you're on vacation. During this shoot, we often use layers of subframing to add complexity and depth. Here, she's subframed by the entire window and a smaller frame. Subframing, you can plan for it by bringing your own props, like this giant hat, or you can just use the environment around you. The colors that you choose to include in your shoots have a huge impact on how viewers perceive your images. This is called color psychology, and it's worth taking some time to learn about how each color affects our perception of an image. In this shoot, we demonstrated this principle with two different colors, pink and yellow. By maintaining the same models and location and only changing the dominant color of their wardrobe, you can see how color has a major impact on the feeling of the photos. According to color psychology, pink can evoke feelings of love, calmness, innocence, and gentleness. When setting up your own shoots, you often have complete creative control over the colors in your image, which in turn will control how the viewer perceives your images. If you'd like to evoke those aforementioned feelings of love, calmness, innocence, or gentleness, you can help do that by including pink in your wardrobe or setting like we did here. Are you getting any of those vibes in these photos? Hope so. Next, we put our models in yellow outfits. Yellow should help promote feelings of energy, confidence, creativity, and joy. What about now? Are you getting any of those vibes here? It's important to think about your entire color palette when planning your shoots. We covered color harmony in the full video, so check that out if you'd like to brush up on it and create stunning images at your next shoot. Color blocking is where you take opposing colors on the color wheel and pair them together. The idea is that the colors will clash in a way that is striking and stops you in your tracks, which is a great goal to have as a photographer. For this color blocked photo shoot, we used a color wheel to help us pick out two opposing colors on the color wheel, blue and tangerine. Because of the way these two colors contrast, the eye will instantly be drawn to them, which is exactly what we want in this day and age of fast scrolling. Consider color blocking your next photo shoot and see what you can come up with.
smooth space allows you to solo your subject. It also creates a relaxed mood that really lets the photo breathe. It can serve to make your photo feel clean or it can provoke a feeling of solitude. When used correctly, negative space can even become the subject of the entire photo. The first thing we did here for this photo shoot is find a location that would give us plenty of open sky. Here in LA, that meant the beach, but if you're landlocked, hills, open fields, or any area with distractionless backdrops should work. The perspective from which you shoot is going to play a huge role in getting the right composition. We prefer getting low to shoot or placing our subject on a hill or higher vantage point. This will help keep our background minimal and better isolate our subject from their surroundings. Alternatively, you can also shoot down on your subject from a higher vantage point if the ground is clear of distractions. Feel free to break composition rules where it makes sense. For example, this photo doesn't abide by any traditional rules of composition, but breaking those rules allowed us to create a feeling of vast, open sea in solitude. If your subject has a pop of color, the eye will automatically be drawn towards it. This serves to direct viewers to your subject and further separates your subject from the background. If you have a lot of elements in your image, having your subject closest to your lens will further serve to direct the viewer's eye to your subject. Negative space is a great tool to have under your belt. Don't forget to utilize it when you need to. If you've learned anything so far about photography, it's probably composition. But here are three things you might not know about it. One, know the rules of composition and know that you can break them. You've probably heard of the rule of thirds, but if you haven't, here's what it is. Rule of thirds asks you to place your subject at any of these four places, or as they're better known, the thirds. Good composition also calls for headroom and looking room. It also asks you to refrain from cutting your subject at the joints. These rules exist for a reason. They give photos balance and help viewers easily know what is important in a photo. However, we also want you to know that you are totally allowed to break these rules. Breaking rules of composition can create added interest and tension in a photo. Breaking the rules well can draw your viewers into a photo in a way that standard rules of composition just can't do. Two, framing, leading lines, and lighting. There are a few tools you can use to add to the composition of your photo. Framing is a great way to box in your subject and add interest to an otherwise boring setting. Leading lines help viewers unconsciously follow them to your subject, so make sure the lines in your photo are working for you and not against you. Light can also highlight your subject, so if your frame has a stream of light in one spot, putting your subject in that light can highlight it literally and figuratively. Three, perspective. There are a lot of choices you have to make when composing your shot, and perspective is one of them. Shooting straight on at your subject or shooting straight up at him or her can create a drastically different story and feeling. Let's recap. With subframing, use your foreground or background to add a frame around your subject, or a prop, like a supersized hat. For color theory, take into account color psychology and color harmony to create a color palette to incorporate in your wardrobe and location before you shoot. With color blocking, consider opposing colors on the color wheel to add eye-catching contrast and juxtaposition to your photos. To incorporate negative space, find a location that gives you a distraction-free backdrop and isolate your subject with your perspective. For a solid composition, know the rules and know that it's okay to break them when you have a good reason to do it. Remember leading lines, framing, and perspective to create strong images. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next one.